It's 18 to 10 and changing focus now back to the council elections. We've got a council candidate with us. Monica Winston is running for the Ballerine Ward of the City of Greater Geelong. Monica, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Mitch. Well, it's an interesting time, of course, to be running for council, but also I've uh, seen you at our candidates forums over the year. Now you're on the other side of the table. It must be very interesting for you. Yes, it is. It's the first time I've run, Mitch, Um, and I normally wouldn't do this kind of thing, but um, we're dealing with a unique situation which has caused me and uh, a team of us actually, a team of women, to step up and run under uh, the banner of Put Climate First. So just explain what that actually means. Why is it so important for local government to talk about these climate issues? That's a really good question, Mitch. Um, A lot of us have been working at the community level for a long time. And the thing is, a lot of our systems are set up uh, with the understanding that we'll have a continual flow of cheap fossil fuels and not only are they not cheap anymore, but, you know, as we know, they're causing uh, major damage. The climate crisis is not an issue. It's it's an emergency and we need to deal with it at every opportunity. Everyone needs to come on board. Um, so it doesn't matter, you know, who else is doing what. We need to show some leadership in this space and local government, Geelong local government has... Um, a huge amount of resources. They're the biggest regional local government outside of Melbourne, and we could do a lot. And in terms of the climate declaration of emergency, I think the council, well, there was a famous incident where they, I think, voted down to actually declare a climate emergency, but then they later passed a motion that said, we recognise that there is a a climate emergency. Does that go far enough for you? No, of course, we need action now and there's a lot of negotiations going on in the background about um, getting council to, you know, it's great that they've uh, declared it, it's great that they've created a sustainability framework, but there are no targets in that just yet and we need to hold them accountable and make sure that um, there is legitimate action and not just um, rehashing stuff that's already in there or things that are too conservative that will not get us into a good space. So the sustainability framework that you mentioned, do you want to just tell us a bit more about what you think of that? Uh, Look, initially it had nothing about food in it. So, you know, our emissions come from every sector. Every decision that that local government makes should be referencing an overall target of zero emissions by a particular year. And we're running on a platform that asks for that um, zero emissions by 2030. There's a lot of councils that have already adopted that, that are already working towards that. And there are others that are working towards other targets like 2035, 2040. 2040 and 2050 is actually too late. We, we really need to pull our finger out. And we've shown with COVID um, at every level of government that we could do that. So what's the biggest priority? I mean, there's a lot to do. Uh, when or if you're elected, what would be the first thing that you'd tackle straight away? We need that overall target of zero emissions by 2030. And a lot of people think, Mitch, that that means, oh, we're just going to be spending tons of money on the environment and we won't have any jobs. It's absolutely the contrary. This is going to be a win-win-win. This is going to be a win for um, the environment that we de- rely on. It's going to be a win for our economic systems. We could have a huge revival of jobs and economics in the long. Um, We could have all sorts of businesses popping up and on board. And it's going to be a win for um, us socially because the other, we've got four points. The first one is our overall target. The second one is localise. So we actually need to reduce our demand for energy and water and all other kinds of resources. And in the best way to do that is to localise our goods and services, which means the support for tonnes of small local businesses. 
Have you been following on the other council issues that have been up for discussion? Some of the controversial ones recently seem to include uh, the free parking in the CBD and also the uh, Mallop Street precinct there, uh, the talk about ripping up the bike lanes. Now the state government's taken over control. Um, how would you vote on those sorts of issues? Uh, really good point, Mitch. Um, this sort of thing is happening because there is not an overarching goal of you know, how many emissions by when or or any strategies about how to get there. So those sort of things would not happen if we had these goals in place because every decision that council made would be referenced against that. And if it was going to increase emissions or it was going to um, make it harder for people to transition generally, um, there would have to be an automatic no to that, just like this gas plant that Viva Energy want to bring into Geelong it's a no-brainer. The answer is no. It's fossil fuels. We can do it with renewables and heat pumps. We've been able to do it with those uh, before this and with localising. We don't need to um, bring in more fossil fuels and it is not a transition fuel. How do you think the Ballerine is going? You're running in, of course, Ballerine Ward. It's quite a big area. It takes in uh, from uh, Coppards Road in Newcomb all the way around to Barwon Heads, that sort of area. Um, how do you think that's represented in comparison to perhaps the other wards in Geelong? Well, the first thing about the Bellarine is it's incredibly vulnerable to sea level rise and storm surges and, and also to extreme weather events. There's, there's a lot of, you know, peri-urban farmers out there and high real estate uh, numbers. So, um, you know, I would think the people of the Bellarine should have a really big vested interest in in voting for uh, someone who puts the climate first. What's your COVID-19 campaign strategy? You're not going to be able to pop out and be in the streets as much as what normally candidates would do. How are you going to overcome that? Um, yeah, well, we've got a website and it's called putclimatefirst.org. Um each of the four candidates who are running, and Belinda Maloney is one of them. She's going to be on your program in a couple of weeks, and she's incredible. Um, so she, we all have our own Facebook page. So Belinda's, for example, is uh, Belinda Maloney for Cardinia. We've got Sandy Dwyer running in Brownville. Uh, Monique um, Connell is running in Windermere and me in Bellarine. So we've all got our, our own Facebook pages um, and we've got our Facebook page called Climate, Put Climate First, and we've got our um, website, and then we're going to have posters and a number of other things, lots of interviews and that kind of thing. Well, good luck with the campaign. A couple of things that we ask every candidate. Number one, uh, do you live within the Ballerine Ward? I don't, uh, Mitch. I currently live in Torquay, but I have been coordinating Transition Streets Geelong since 2017, and prior to that, I've basically got a 13-year history in Geelong um, of running. I was a founding member of Geelong Sustainability and then have been coordinating Transition Streets Geelong for four years. So I've been working and socialising all over Geelong for the last 13 years. We also ask candidates about their politics, but I think with you it's pretty clear you're part of the Put Climate First Alliance. That's right. Climate's number one. And uh, the final thing we get candidates to do is just to do a bit of an elevator pitch, just to talk directly to the voters who are listening today. Why should they vote for you when those ballot packs come out in October? Okay, because um, I've researched all the topics related to this. Um, it's not an issue. It's our survival that's at stake. And uh, if we get that right, everything else can fall into place. But if we ignore that, we're going to be paying out for damage to our environment and therefore our economy and our social systems big time, as we've seen with the fires. So we need to get started on restoring ecosystems. That's our number three. And number four is a citizen's democracy. The people, you know, four out of five Victorians want strong action on climate change, and that's stats from Sustainability Victoria. That's what people want, so we're making that available. Well, thank you so much for being on the program, and I believe we'll be seeing you at our Ballerine Candidates Forum that we're also running on Zoom uh, in October. So best of luck with the campaign. We really appreciate your time this morning. 
Thank you, Mitch. I appreciate your time too. Thank you. Thank you, Monica Winston, joining us there, candidate for the Ballerine. Mitchell's Front Page with Mitchell Dye. Mondays and Tuesdays from 9 till 11 on 94.7 The Pulse.